Okay, so what does Descartes rule of sign tell us? And I love this uh, to use as just another aid, you know, kind of like we say a little tool in your tool belt to really help you out when you're analyzing all this work because obviously we want to use our technology as much as possible. But it's important for us to understand when we're looking at a polynomial, what our answer, are our answers going to be viable? Are they going to work? So when you're calculating the zeros, right, we talked about the rational zero test. Sometimes you could be writing out all the rational zeros and your polynomial doesn't even contain any rational zeros, right? Well, for here Descartes' rule of signs, what it does is that's going to tell us the number of pos or I'm sorry, the number of positive and negative zeros that our polynomial is going to contain. So we can determine the number of possible rational zeros, and we can also determine um, the number of positive and uh, negative zeros. And that's something helpful that when you're looking at your graphing utility and you know, you're kind of looking at and determining you know, your zeros, it's going to give you a good, good idea, especially when you know the degree and the linear factorization, how many zeros you have, how many turning points, and behavior, and all this other stuff. You need to understand that as a whole complexity to really get to the problem. So while I blah, 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 let's go and get to the problem. So all the Descartes rule of sign tells us, if we have a polynomial f of x equals a to the n, x to the n, um, plus a to the n minus 1, x to the n minus 1, dot, 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 a to the 1, x to the 1, plus a to the 0. If we have a polynomial in that form, which is our form for a polynomial, right? That's how we wrote it in the beginning of the year. Then what we have is the number of positive real zeros. All right, so the number of positive real zeros is equal to the variations of signs in your polynomial. So, um, or less than an even integer of those. So the number of positive real zero, I don't want to go through, equal to the variations of signs. So it's the variation signs of your coefficients of your terms. And I'll go through this real quick. OK. Yeah, of your terms. So what does this mean? Uh, it's equal to the variation of coefficient of your terms or less than an even integer. All right, so let's just take a look at a function. Let's say I had f of x equal to, I don't know, 3x to the fourth minus 5x cubed plus 2x squared plus 3x minus 7. Okay, So what this means is any variation of sign, you can see this is a positive 3x to the fourth. So since that's a positive and that's a negative, I have a variation of a sign. Here I have a negative to a positive, that's another variation of a sign. However, from here I have a positive to a positive, there's no variation, and here I have a positive and a negative. So therefore, in this polynomial, I have three variations. However, it's not just the number of variations, it's also less than an even integer. So I could take three and then subtract two, which would give me one. So the number of positive real zeros is either three positive real zeros or one positive real zero. Then the next thing I need to do is look at um, the negative zeros. So the number of negative real zeros is also equal to the variation, but that is the negative. Do I have room over here? OK. The negative is equal to the variation of f of negative x. So what you're going to do is you're now going to evaluate for f of negative x, which would be 3 times negative x to the fourth minus 5 times negative x cubed plus 2 times negative x squared plus 3 times negative x minus 7. So let's go and evaluate this. Negative x to the fourth is always going to be a positive, so I have 3x to the fourth. Negative x cubed is a negative x cubed times a negative 5, which now becomes a positive 5x cubed. This uh, negative x squared will become positive times 2 
will be also become will remain positive 2x squared minus 3x minus 7. So you can see I only have now one variation. So there's only going to be one negative uh, real possible real zero. So therefore, when you're looking for your positive results, is it possible to only have one positive real zero? No. You have to have one negative real zero and three possible real zeros. And that's just helpful for when you're going to look for your graph. You know, maybe if your window doesn't have the setting, you can't find all the zeros, you know you're going to have three positive real zeros. So you're going to want to set your settings all more into that positive value to kind of look for them. It also helps if you do synthetic division. If you already find, if you do synthetic division and you already have a negative zero, then you don't need to continue using try and synthetic division for all the negative answers. Just continue. Now search looking for the positive uh, zeros that you can use. So that's what helps. That's what Descartes' rule of science allows us to do. I know it kind of got a little sloppy. I wasn't really planning on doing that, but I said, eh, you know, what the heck. So just remember it's the number of positive real zeros is equal to the variation of signs of your coefficients or less than an even number. And for the negative, you have to do f of negative x, but still you're going to look for the alternate of signs. So whatever, what you're going to do. But therefore, I hope you understand the Cartes rule of signs. Thanks.